Long, long ago, in the country of Japan, centuries before the advent of anime, there brewed a monumental conflict all across the nation, like the Beyblade English dub insert song. Armies rose up and brawled with each other, day after day, with the end goal of striving to unite the land of the rising sun under their banner, and be crowned the absolute alpha male in charge by dominating all the other men and making them submit through physical subjugation. Na na na, come on. Our story begins with one Sanada Yukimura, the second in command of the Takada army. A loyal spear-wielding stud in his physical prime, a boy with abs so shredded you think he was who the Ninja Turtles referred to as their greatest nemesis, and the prodigy of Takada Shingen, a brolic building of a man known as the Tiger of Kai, Japan's version of a bear, and to whom Sanada Yukimura is the cub. Now Shingen and by association Yukimura and the rest of the Takada army hold a steadfast rivalry with the Uesugi army of Echigo, led by androgynous Queen Uesugi Kenshin no Himura no Batosai, a gender ambiguous icon who puts both the on the T in the Sengoku period edition of the LGBT acronym Lesbian Gay Bishomon Ten, an object of affection of his loyal ninja Kasuga who puts the Echi in Echigo. One night, the Takada army is informed of the Uesugi army's location by their very own ninja, Yukimura's boy wife on the go, the superior Sasuke, and early assurance we should have known the Sarutobi bloodline would make adult Konohamaru smoking hot, Sarutobi Sasuke. So Takada tasks his cub with launching an early attack, which Yukimura agrees to lead, but unbeknownst to Takada's ripe, ripply muscled cub, Shingen has sent Yukimura not to meet the Uesugi army, but his future soulmate. Meanwhile, in pursuit of the Uesugi army from the rear, cause of course, is the Date army, led by the father of Shoku Daikiri Mitsutada and grandfather Takaya Alberich, the one-eyed dragon of Oshu, Date Masamune. At his side, his second-in-command work-and-play husband, Katakura Kojiro, a man known as the right eye of the dragon, which if you turn a dragon's face upside down with a little imagination, you could also say makes him his left testicle, an organ I'm sure he's well acquainted with. But in the midst of the night, during booty call hours, while both in pursuit of the Kenshi not created by a criminal, the tiger cub and the one-eyed dragon meet, catch each other's eye, size each other up, and immediately proceed to lock lips. Weapons as the two armies proceed to engage. As it's revealed that Shingen did not send Yukimura to fight Kenshin, he purposely sent him to fight Masamune to both set him up on a date, as well as to make sure that the Date army would not interfere with his own clash with the Uesugi, that way he could have Kenshin, his opponent, his rival, his lover, all to himself. There's a reason the Uesugi flag is simply the word bye. Now at this point you may be thinking with all these seemingly separate couples, that the story would be contradicting itself, but this is Sengoku period Japan. According to Wikipedia, it's between 1467 and 1615. Monogamy has not been invented yet. I can't factually prove that, so you'll have to take my word on it like out of context tweets you accept as fact on Twitter. Open your mind, expand your heart, keep your head, in the gutter. Yukimura and Masamune continue to throw their bodies at each other for round after round until Sasuke cock blocks the duo, ruining things. And isn't that so on brand for a Sasuke? Informing Masamune he is about to be surrounded in a free army free for all, and if this were a free sum, he would be the DP. Does he really want to be the DP? To which Masamune's husband encourages him to retreat since he knows firsthand he's not loose enough for that yet, and so the Date army retreats. But in those parting moments, once that fine Cyclops of a man has left Yukimura, he throbs. The tiger cub falls to his knees, filled with a sense of longing he has not felt before. Sure, he's got his fast and flexible Shinobusi and even big tiger daddy back home, but this is different. And Masamune, a man never known to fall for a fling, let alone get their name, for once, feels the same. But in the background of this blossoming of rivals to lovers, a monogamous menace lurks, threatening to tear down the unrestrained romance that fills the country with relentless force. A few days later, Masamune surprises Yukimura on accident on purpose, teasing the young stud by playing hard to get, a tactic that ensnares the spunky spunk fear kills Yukimura, who follows in pursuit. However, their horny game of curious cat and manipulative mouse is cut short by the arrival of the monogamous menace sweeping the country, leaving destruction in his one-partner propaganda wake, Oda Nobu. <laughs> Naga, a terror of all terrors against whom no army has been able to survive, and who strives to eradicate the loose goosey interwoven romantic and sexual relationships ever present within the country, because he is a polymonogamist who believes the only reason you should have multiple partners is if you're at the center of a harem where the haremates do not dip their toes in other mouths, I mean pawns. Oda's own harem, consisting of his loyal lady husband Nohime, bubbly boy wife Mori Ranmaru, and creepy Shinigami consort Akichi Mitsuhide. The sheer sight of this hypocritical harem hype beast leaves Masayuki unable to react due to terror of this direct 
threat to their love, as their own courtship in Oda's eyes contradicts Masamune's with his husband and Yukimura with his Papa Tiger in Ninja 2. In response, Shingen and Kenshin agree to the domestic partnership they've secretly always wanted and with the Date along for the ride, set out to take down Nobunaga and preserve the freedom to have their cake in each of 2, 3, 4, and sometimes 15. Their first confrontation as a civil union being against Oda's allies, Azai and Tokugawa, the latter led by Shingen's out-of-state renter cub Ieyasu, the greatest twunk in all of Nippon with his robot Pikachu Honda Tatakatsu at his side, and the former led by Nagamasa, a cishet man in white, and the brother-in-law to Nobunaga through his matrimony to the Oda Emoto, Oichi. As the Oesugi and Takada Eiffel Tower the Tokugawa, the Date rush ahead to froth the Azai in a facial-to-facial face-off between devoted husbands. But then, the tides turn when the Oda suddenly betrays its allies, trouncing the Tokugawa because Nobunaga has no need for a butterface twunk when he has a flawless face twink, one hit KOing the Tokugawa Mekachu with Fisher in the process, and killing Nagamasa for being straight, but also because Nobunaga is secretly a siscon. In the aftermath, Masamune is injured, but the Takada take him in, per the Date being stepson in the Takada Ueski married couple roleplay alliance. However, despite the groups believing they have a moment to rest from fighting the Oda, another adjacent threat presents itself in the form of notorious horny homewrecker Matsunaga Hisahide, who kidnaps some of the Date men and threatens to deflower them unless he's brought Shingen's full body condom and Masamune's six dragon dicks, causing Yukimura and Kojiro to team up on behalf of their communal cock to save the Date men, and who says the main squeeze can't get along with the side piece? But tragedy strikes thrice when Kenshin is almost dead no named on his own turf by Nohime, while Mitsuhide gets Shingen so soaking wet he is left in a coma. Masamune, however, has just recovered and is ready to fight for his right to be a whore, while the cub has lost his motivation after seeing the tiger taken out of commission. So the one-eyed dragon, fueled with the passion of a pride parade speech, grabs Yukimura by the neck balls and tells him, Listen you bloody body girls, come guzzling git, I love you, but I can't keep loving you if that asshole turns our country into a hetero isekai harem standum five centuries too early. So I need you to take these neck balls and stick them in your pants and ride with me and me without the whiff for miles per hours into the sunset to burn this tosser to the ground. Are you with me? To which a reinvigorated Yukimura responds, You already know I wanna fuck. The two launch into the night, dead set on consummating their relationship in the name of maintaining their many hoes back home, until they arrive in a trap set by Akachi Mitsuhide, which was intended to be a trap for Nobunaga, because it turns out Mitsuhide is a monogamous yandere who believes if he can't have Nobunaga to himself, then no one can. But it turns out Nobunaga has actually turned Mitsuhide's trap for him into a trap for Mitsuhide, unceremoniously kicking the Yandere Grim Reaper out of his harem because he refuses to give up the many for the one. How dare he question the double standard? But before the Flamers can go out in a blaze of glory, Kojiro arrives with the united army of Date Uesuke, Takada, and Etsetora, ready to bury the harem king in the name of free love, as he turns Mitsuhide into Mitsuhide and subsequently scares Nobunaga's lurking twink into leaving the harem as well, telling him, Be free, boy. Don't be groomed anymore. Find yourself a sugar daddy instead. I know on paper they seem the same, but I assure you there's a difference. With Mori proceeding to Ranmaru off, not understand the difference, and instead in his confusion choose heterosexuality and never be heard from again. So red and blue, no first generation. Storm, the Oda's stronghold in the name of having sexual relations with everyone they want, even overlap and maybe group participation, or maybe take turns, whatever your preference, hashtag Sengo Bukake, and clash directly with the harem supremacist himself, but against the overwhelming power of selfish hypocrisy, the two find themselves fucking, I mean fighting, a losing battle. Until from nowhere, Mecha Pikachu is revealed to have survived, using explosion to buy the duo time for a final attack, which they prepare for by Yukimura metaphorically getting on one knee and proposing with his headband as a proverbial ring, and the two committing to never be committed. An auction that's followed by the arrival of a collection of characters and couple dynamics you'll learn about in a potential part 2 of this video series. If you share this video with your mates and comment below what you want to see in part 2, along with which character so far is the hottest. As the ancient Japanese version of a poly pride parade assemble at the Oda stronghold, the power of the rainbow launches into the sky, incubating within Masamune and Yukimura, but the defiant Oda bolts at their values, reiterating he walks the path of supremacy. White supremacy. Monogamous supremacy. But against the odds, against true evil, against polymonogamy, against the horny head harem that said gay rights that is not Rinai flops, the dragon and the cub unleash the fattest came at the same time dual miracle nut in Oda's face, instantly killing him and preserving the countrywide unspoken law that sharing is caring, whoring's not boring, harems should be structured like spider webs, not molecules. In the end, the land of the rising sun returns to its previous status quo of flirting through fight fucking as far as the country's borders reach. Masamune and Yukimura continue their courtship with Katsukura all too willing to witness, Shingen and Kenshin recover and go on their honeymoon, and all along Sasuke even had his own Sakura. I tell you more, but let's just say you can probably 
probably guess what exactly was going on despite being hidden in the leaves. And you've been watching Queer Coding, a crispy channel horror original series where straight is only the default if you want it to be. And why would you want it to be? Make sure to let me know in the comments if you want a part two or maybe three for Sengoku Basara. There's so many more love stories to be told. Or let me know below which other series you'd like to see get the queer coding treatment. Head to the description to visit my Patreon and hear me review every single DBZ movie in my Natscast podcast. Or hear what anime I'm watching this season, including a rant about Bleach and my concerns with Blue Lock aside from the acronym being BL. And never forget full service part seven is out. Come witness why Sota is no Shota. Shout out to my newest patrons, Hallie Scott, Shy, Wiccan Libra Woman, Night Owl 1990, Ellen Watson, Shureen, Momo's Fandom Corner, EW, and Nazaria. Never dom scribe, only subscribe, and ping a ling the bell icon to not miss my next video, which might be part two of this, or might be an exhausted rant on why it's apparently cool to hate anime fans. Again, bye!